Of the 1,000 Cantor employees at the uh, Trade Center, only 300 are accounted for at this time, and none was at the building at that time. This immense human loss has truly devastated the chairman and CEO, Howard Lutnick, whose own brother is missing and presumed dead. You have suffered such great professional and personal loss. Do you, what is the fate of your brother? Well, my brother, my brother was on the 103rd floor. He worked, he worked for me, and um, he worked at Canner, and uh, he, he called my sister uh, just, after the, just after the plane hit, and he told her that, um, he said that the smoke was pouring in. He was, he was stuck in a corner office. There was no way out, and the smoke was coming in, and he's, he's not good. And, and things are not good, and he's not going to make it. And he just wanted to say that he loved her. And he wanted to say goodbye and uh, tell everyone that, that he loved them. And then the phone went, the phone went dead. So, so while I'm the head of the company, I'm trying to help my 700 employees who are missing their, their loved ones. I'm just, just another one of them. Just another one of them. Normally, you would have been in your office uh, on which floor? 105th floor. On the 105th floor. And yet, you didn't go in early that morning because of a critical decision you made. <laughs> my, uh, my little boy, I have a five-year-old, and it was his first day of kindergarten at, uh, at Horace Mann. So I took him for his first day of big boy school. And uh, because of that, I was late getting down to the office. And uh, therefore, I, I wasn't in the building. I was on my way to the building instead. And when you got to the building? Well, I, I, I saw the building on fire, so I, I didn't go in. Um, but I stood, I stood at the door um, off of Church Street um, where there were flags there, and I stood at that door, um, and people were coming out, and I was yelling at them, you know, to run and get out. And uh, there were police sort of around me um, yelling at people, telling them to get out, and, and I would ask them what floor they were coming from, what floor they're coming from. Someone would say, 55, and I'd scream, we have 55, and because and, I kept wanting to get up the building and, and get because people out of the building. Because all your employees were on? 101 to 105, the top floors of the of number one World Trade Center, the, which they call now the North Tower. So how high was the highest number that you got to? I got to the 91st floor, and I knew if I got one employee, what, if one person came down from that floor, then I know that there had to be others. There would be others behind them. There would be others going out other doors that, that would be good. But I got up to 91, and then I heard this sound. It sounded like another plane was going to hit the building. And was it, but it didn't sound like it was far away. It sounded like it was like right where the ceiling is above us. It was so unbelievably loud. And someone screamed out, another one's coming. So I just turned around and ran. And I, and I was running. I, what was it? It was, it was number two World Trade Center collapsing. So I'm, a, I'm, I'm standing underneath a building like an idiot. Um, and I start running. And I'm trying to get ahead of the smoke. And then the smoke comes around the corner on Trinity Church where I ran and knocks me down underneath a truck. And I'm sitting there in this black, the blackest black that can ever be. I reached up. I tried to see if I could see. And I took my hands and I put it up. And I actually touched my eye. Because, and it was so much smoke, and I wasn't you smart enough. You couldn't even see your own hand? I, I couldn't see my hand. I could feel the particles in the air. They were, they were like this big. I could feel them going in, and I, wasn't, I couldn't think to like, pick up my shirt. And put, I, was just, I was just sitting there thinking, I, I can't believe it. I can't believe by standing there I died. So I just started walking. I just started walking straight. And I just walked straight. And I just keep walking straight. And I called my wife four hours later. And she was hysterical crying. And, so I understand why it took lots of people a long time. I, I was, I'm a pretty together person, and I, four hours I walked. I just walked north. I just kept walking. One of your other offices had a squawk box open, and, and the other offices were able to hear the screams. Is that true? I don't, I don't know that they heard. It is, it is true that we have a squawk line. box. Yeah, we have, you know, a speakerphone, because all our offices are connected in our equity business. They're, um, they're all connected to each other because they talk to each other all day. And they heard them saying, you know, we need help, we need help, we need help. Uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't screams. It was, there was nowhere to go. You couldn't go down, you couldn't go up. There was nowhere to go. But I don't know of a single one of my employees who got down. Zero. Zero, and it's really sad. But I think we're all pulling together with the view that we want to make things happen for them. We, we need to take care of them. We need to figure out how to take care of them, and give them more, take care of them. And I think it's going to be a different kind of drive than I've ever had before. It's not about 
My, it's not about my family. I get to kiss my kids. I get to kiss my kids tonight. But other people don't get to kiss their kids. And I just have to help them. And I think, I think what's amazing, and I think it's amazing, you have 300 people. They lost all their friends. They lost the person to their left. They lost the person to their right. And they call me up and they say, I want to go to work. I say, why do you want to go to work? Let's just go to funerals. And they go, no, no, I want to go to work. I can't stay home. I can't stay home. I have to make, I have to work. I have to do something. And so they, they actually wanted to try to figure out how to be in business. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. It doesn't make any sense. But the, the, the reason they want to be in business, and there's only one reason to be in business, is because we have to make our company be able to take care of my 700 families. 700 families. How do you have 700 families? I just I can't say it. I can't say it without crying. You spent hours and hours talking to every family member. You have spent hours at the Pierre Hotel in that ballroom. Well, I, I go in, I, I just, I, I just tell them, look, I'll, I'll answer any question. Any question you want, anything about it. But I lost my brother, and I'm in no different position than you are. I'm not any different. I'll just tell you everything I know. But I get to say to everybody so that they believe me that when I say that we are doing everything we can to find their kid, that they know that I do not look for my brother. I don't go to any hospital or get anybody to go to any hospital and say, find Gary Lutnick for me. Why I not? Because I go with an employee list. I say, here's my list. Here's everybody I got. Find somebody on this list. I don't care who they are. Because if you find someone on this list, then I get to call them. And I get to give somebody else some hope, some dream. Maybe, maybe they get to kiss their kids. It, it, it's, I'd, I'd love to find my brother, but I'd love to find, I'd love to find their brother or their wife or their husband or their, anything, anything. It's so, been said that the loss of your company will have worldwide impact. Cannon Fitzgerald is the primary, it's like the exchange for the world's bond markets. I mean, it's, it, it is the exchange for the world bond markets. Uh, we last, last year we did $50 trillion in business. Today, the remaining employees of Cannon Fitzgerald and Eastbeat have worked every second since that bomb. And they made the decision. And I told them there's no reason for us to open. I don't care when we open, if we open, it doesn't matter to me. And they collectively, 250 of them, collectively voted that they were going to open the markets. And this morning, 7 a.m., those people opened for business, not to, to make money, not to, but they did it because they thought if the, if the Fed and the Treasury wanted it to be open, it was important enough for them to show strength for America and for these markets, then they were going to do their damnedest to get it open, and they did. And it, I, I voted against it. I said, why? I, I don't want you to work. I want you to go home and kiss your kids and, and hug your families, and, but they, it's them. They wanted they wanted to do it, maybe for themselves, maybe for the, their friends who they lost. But so right this second, it, our electronic systems are running around the world, and it's, I don't know, maybe it's a miracle. Maybe it's because these people are just, they're unbelievable. They're well, the best. Maybe they're the best because they had an incredible boss. I think it goes the other way around. I think you can only be a good boss if you have the right people. And, I'm glad they chose to be with me, but I'm the saddest person in the world that they chose to be with me. Because <laughs> they would have chose to be with me. <laughs> so many people, so many names, so many people I loved. Many of the Cantor families that we spoke with said that he's truly a remarkable man. And um, I, I think, Peter, he just clearly doesn't fit the image of a typical CEO on Wall Street. No kidding. Thanks, Connie, very much. Connie Chung. Howard Lutnick, a personality from Cantor Fitzgerald, the CEO, a man with 700 families, and a much uh, expanded family, I would think, now that we have seen him and, and shared his tragedy with him. Howard Lutnick, a personality this country will not forget, period.